Fox Carolina is committed to you, and today is Vietnam War Veteran Memorial Day. And so for much more on this, we are now joined by Vietnam veteran Neil Lark. So, Mr. Lark, first off, thank you so much for your service. And I think you sitting here with us today, how important is this day that we honor the service and sacrifice of those who served in the Vietnam War, such as yourself? Well, uh, Justin, thank you for helping draw attention to this day that for many years had no attention. Uh, because when the troops came home from that war, uh, sometimes they were told not to wear the uniform because of the uh, opposition that they would get. So I think it's overdue that we recognize uh, all those many, many ones who served during that time. And I, I've heard your story before, but for people at home, uh, you, were, you were actually wounded in battle. And yes, I was. Came, I was there in 1970 at a period of time when we finally were told we could go into Cambodia, which had been a sanctuary for the bad guys for many, many years. So by platoon, uh, went in and encountered, uh, I'll call it a warehouse of rice, but it was simply poles with tin on top. And it was guarded. We came under fire. Uh, we returned fire. As I was calling for fire support, uh, the company commander questioned uh, if I knew where I was and I was giving him good coordinates and so he pulled me back to verify that this was an area that we could be in and uh, so later that day he confirmed that yes I did know where I was and was given the order to go back. Well nevertheless uh, obviously they were still waiting they were waiting on us this time dug in uh, we went a different way but we came into a considerable firefight and in the course of that, I was wounded. Not life-threatening, but enough to kind of put me out of commission. Uh, but immediately my uh, platoon medic, Corporal John Wheatley, came to my aid. And while he was administering first aid to me, uh, he was mortally wounded and I felt his lifeless body fall across my back. Uh, that day's memorable for me, May the 26th. 1970, uh, just one example of a young man who paid the ultimate sacrifice, uh, simply doing what he was trained to do, what he was ordered to do, and one of those that want to make sure that is never forgotten. You know, one of 58,000 plus that are names that are on the wall in Washington that commemorates their ultimate sacrifice. You bear the weight of battle. You've seen it, you've been there for it. What would be your message to some veterans at home who may be struggling? Is because we know when they come home, no matter what the war is, there's struggles. What would Absolutely. be your message Absolutely. to those younger veterans? Interestingly enough, since I knew of this opportunity, I watched a movie, Mending the Line, about a veteran from Afghanistan who was really emotionally and physically in a bad way and was in a VA rehab facility. And it was a fictional story. But he was paired up with a Vietnam vet to learn fly fishing as a rehab kind of treatment. And this old soldier, in trying to reach out to this young man, this young trouble man, he said that part of your life, the battle, the war, was just a chapter in the book of your life. It was not the book. And for all of those, no matter what their struggle, no matter what their emotional or physical state, uh, I encourage you to get assistance, to know that life has so much more, uh, and you have so much more to offer regardless of your experiences to those around you, to your family, to fellow veterans. Well, Mr. Luck, we thank you again for your service. Can't thank you enough. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with us today. Absolutely.